Good morning, eighth graders. So we are coming up on our first like major, major test. Um, so I wanted to make sure that I went through the review with you so that if you aren't in class when I go through this, or if I just move far too quickly, that you still have the opportunity to um, get the same sort of information of what's going on. So you should have the review Earth, Moon, and Sun in front of you. I need you to write your name up here. I am going to put my year of when I'm recording this, but you need to put your name, please. Okay, so this packet seems hefty, but it's a lot of diagramming. So that's why it seems like a lot of questions. Let's see, we're at eight, supposedly. Eight-ish sort of questions. So, um, but let's go through this and kind of see everything that's going on. So um, what I like to do with my packets or reviews or whatever um, when I'm studying is I like to go through and I just like to kind of see what kind of questions are we asking are they going to build upon each other or are they just like their own little entity? So what are the seasons a result of? So this is going to come from Earth and Sun. Okay. Why do we in the Northern Hemisphere have more sunlight in the summer months? Again, this is Earth and Sun. I'm just going to abbreviate it. Venus. The Northern Hemisphere, sorry, draw the Northern Hemisphere in relation to the sun during summer and winter, Earth and sun. What is true about the separate hemispheres and seasons? Think like mirror. So again, Earth and sun. I hope we're starting to see a little bit of a pattern thus far. What is a solar eclipse? So this is going to come from Earth moon and sun okay and if we're talking lunar or solar eclipse a lunar eclipse is going to come from the same information okay so there's the whole front half let's go to the next page order the sun moon and earth in the correct order depending on the type of eclipse eclipse means earth moon and sun umbra versus penumbra we are again still looking at um, eclipses okay so here is compare and contrast eclipses so i give you information and then you need to kind of come up with your own draw it out sort of a thing okay so, sorry, Earth, Moon, and Sun. Understanding the difference between revolution and rotation. This is back to Earth and Sun. Identify which season in the Northern Hemisphere would be due to the location in the revolution, Earth and Sun. We're talking season still. So complete the model of the moon phases by shading in the part of the moon that is not reflected in the sun's light, its shadow, and label the appropriate phases during the moon. So this is a two-parter, okay? So we have number one, where we are diagramming, and then number two, where we are labeling. And all of this is from Earth and Moon, okay? Why do we see different phases of the moon throughout the month? Final Earth and Moon. Okay, so that is the first step I tend to go through just to kind of get an idea of where does my brain need to be. Okay, so let's start actually going through this. Okay, so anytime you see Earth and Sun, you should make sure that you have those notes out in front of you. Okay, so what are seasons a result of? Why do we experience seasons? Well, there are two major reasons. So the first one would be the tilt of our axis. Okay, 
So the fact that we are tilted at a slight degree and that tilt doesn't change no matter where you're at, it stays where it is. It just depends on whether we're tilted more so towards the sun or further from the sun. So the tilt of our axis. But then on top of that, the tilt wouldn't matter because if we just stayed like this and then our tilt just kind of followed as we actually went around the earth, or the sun, sorry, um, if we just stayed like this, we're going to be constantly in the same season. But because our tilt stays the same as we revolve, this is where we start to get those separate seasons. So it's the tilt in conjunction with the revolution. around the sun. Okay, so that constant tilt, so that constant angle, and no matter where you're at, that angle doesn't change. It's just what direction is that angle now pointing in relation to the sun, okay? So as long as you hit those, now granted, you're going to need complete sentences this is just a rough like outline. You put it in your own words. But as long as you hit this, you're good. And remember the difference between revolution versus rotation. I don't know how many learners I've had to mark down on free response questions because you get revolution and rotation flip-flopped. Okay. Why do we in the Northern Hemisphere have more sunlight in the, su in the summer months? So this kind of goes back to this idea but to drive it home a little bit more we get more sunlight hours because remember we have this axis okay so if i draw in this axis that's constantly tilted like this this is our summer When we are directed toward the sun more so, we're getting more of those direct lines. Now, do I have a pencil? Why would I have a pencil? Hold on a moment. I just want to show you this. You don't have to write this in. But remember, our sun's rays come in this direction. So you can see that. The northern hemisphere are much shorter than the southern hemisphere versus if we go over here to winter okay we have that sunlight has to stretch a lot further in order to start warming us up um so that so why do we in the northern hemisphere have more sun sunlight hours in the summer months it's again because of that tilt so our tilt toward the sun, the sun's rays don't have to elongate as far. So tilt of axis as well as um, sun rays on the northern hemisphere. Are less stretched. Okay. So, again, those are two bullet points. You need to put them into some sort of a sentence. Okay. So, I'm going to give you just a moment. And because I need to still drink my coffee and this is my it's just a phase cup and I love it so much so okay draw the northern hemisphere in relation to the sun during the summer and winter months so remember we're sitting at that angle and that angle is always kind of pointed toward the right okay so for summer we have our axis that is tilted I'm just gonna put the north up here so we know like what we're talking about since we're talking specifically the northern hemisphere and then over here, our angle doesn't change. It's just we're on the other side of the sun. So we are experiencing much less um, 
direct radiation over here than we are here. Okay, and again, that comes down to the sun's rays not having to stretch as far in the summer months versus the winter months. Okay, um, awesome. Hopefully we're good so far. Number three, what is true about the separate hemispheres during different seasons? Think a mirror. So when I'm talking different hemispheres, okay, and by the way, when I write in pencil, you don't need to add it, okay? I'm just showing you. So if this was our equator, Okay. Now, don't mind the fact that it's not a straight line and it doesn't really hit directly in the center of my earth. I am a science teacher, not an art teacher. Okay, so we have our northern hemisphere versus our southern hemisphere. So I'm going to write this down here just so you have that idea. Okay, when we are directed toward the sun, we are receiving a majority of that direct sunlight. Okay, versus down here in the south, they're having to stretch their sunlight a lot further. So if we're really, really warm, they're actually becoming quite chilly. Okay, this and just the opposite in the winter where our sunlight has to stretch really far, theirs is coming right at them. Okay, so what is true about the separate hemispheres, the northern hemisphere versus the southern hemisphere? We're opposite, okay? I know, I talk bluey a lot because right now that's Will's thing, okay? But this is why if you've ever watched Veranda Santa or Christmas Swim or whatever, they're in the middle of their summer months versus we just hit winter months for us. So what is true about the Southern Hemisphere or the separate hemispheres? When the Northern Hemisphere more than hemisphere is experiencing experiencing summer the southern hemisphere Sorry, it takes me so long to write and not be able to talk. Is experiencing experiencing. And it doesn't help that like I'm sitting here like, oh, I can't make any spelling errors on this or else I know the amount of grief I'll get from a bunch of eighth graders. Okay, is experiencing winter. So we are opposite. Opposite. And again, this comes down to how far are light rays needing to stretch themselves in order to reach that specific hemisphere, okay? And I really hope that from now on, none of y'all are gonna forget about Veranda Santa because I'm sitting here just dishing out bluey facts. So. <laughs> Okay, now we get to shift our mindset just a little bit because now we are kind of working our way out of our seasons and our revolution and things like that. And we are focusing in on solar and lunar eclipses. So what is a solar eclipse? Now, remember, I'm going to draw this out to the side. Okay, our sun doesn't move. So if this is our sun, okay, our sun constantly stays there. It's whether we on Earth have the moon in front of us or the moon behind us, okay? So a solar eclipse, soul meaning sun, is when the moon is blocking out the sun from us, okay? Versus a lunar eclipse, lunar meaning moon, is when we are blocking out the moon from the sun. So for this, I am simply going to just write some key terms for you. I want you to be able to put it into a complete sentence, but you have the sun 
then you have the moon blocking or casting a shadow the earth or on the earth okay now in order to get this this comes back to our demo day so when we were holding up the um, styrofoam um, balls what lunar phase do we have to be in in order for this to actually happen okay essentially we're like the moon isn't being able to reflect any sunlight because it has its back to the sunlight and blocking it so the only way that this can happen is during a new moon phase new moon phase okay so we mentioned the objects sun moon earth we mentioned the shadow so the fact that the moon is blocking or casting a shadow onto the earth and the phase of the moon in which this can occur. Okay, now it is up to you to put it into a complete sentence. Okay, so let's talk what is a lunar eclipse. So remember, this is where we have the sun, earth, moon. Okay, and I'm gonna put it into a similar sort of format for you to fill in with a complete sentence. So again, the sun, because the sun doesn't move, it's whether we are moving or not. Okay, so sun and then we have the earth blocking or casting a shadow onto the moon um so i am recording this at 5 37 i've been talking for 17 minutes so let's just call it five o'clock to call it, make my life easy um so 5 a.m on Tuesday, September 17th. And as I looked out into, oh, it's gotten much lower and it's much more orange. So I woke up at four this morning and the moonlight was flooding into my bathroom. Um, but we are on our last moments-ish because it's starting to set um, of our waxing gibbous and this evening, so Tuesday night, we will be in our full moon position, but also we are going to be in a, for the Northern Hemisphere, so for North Dakota, we are going to be in the penumbral um, eclipse for like my nephew down in Florida. They will actually be in the umbral lunar phase, um, lunar eclipse, meaning that the moon will turn completely red for a little bit because of the earth blocking like the sun from really being able to cast a shadow onto the moon um so kind of cool so tonight granted it's gonna be probably early ish in the morning let's see can i open up a web browser on my second screen and double check okay so Time of lunar eclipse on Tuesday. It's like in this. Oh, much. Oh, okay. Eastern Standard Time. Okay. So at 8.41 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, the lunar eclipse will happen. Um, and it won't actually move its way out of... Oh, goodness. Okay, sorry. I'm like reading this in the moment. So the Googs. New York Times specifically is telling me that when the lunar when is the lunar eclipse and where can I see it? So the lunar eclipse will happen between 8:41 Eastern Standard Time on Tuesday and 12:47 a.m. on Wednesday is when it'll be at its maximum potential phase or partial phase occurring at 10:44 p.m. It will be a visible across the United States, Canada, Latin America, and the Caribbean, Africa, and Europe. Holy goodness gracious. So if it starts to happen at 841 Eastern time, that means it's going to start happening at 741 Central time. I don't believe it.
do, do, do. Yeah, I'm like way too into this and should be focusing in on y'all's review, but hey, what time is all in an eclipse? Because I know that's what you care about. Oh my goodness, now it's telling me to like take off my ad blocker. Dumb. Okay, either way. Starting this evening, probably early-ish in the evening, um, we should be able to see that lunar eclipse. Back to this. I apologize. Okay, so, and then, as I've already said, so right now on Tuesday at 540 in the morning, we are finishing up our moments of our waxing gibbous, meaning that once we move out of our waxing gibbous, we are officially in full moon phase. So the only time that we can get a lunar eclipse is when we are in a full moon phase because the moon has to be back on this backside and tilted typically with its five degree tilt, we are slight, the moon is slightly above or slightly below and it's getting fully illuminated by the sun. Okay, moving on because that took way more time than I expected. Um, so we already kind of did this on the front page. So. We need to order our um, objects. So remember for solar, it's sun, moon, earth. For lunar, it is sun, earth, moon. So I always like to start with our sun because once again, it doesn't move. Okay, so our sun for solar, it is sun, moon, earth. And for a lunar eclipse, it is sun, earth, moon. Okay. Identify the object. So we are looking for the penumbra and the umbra when it comes to the diagram. Okay. So I am going to use my pencil for this answer just because it is what works best for in my brain. Okay. So this is a solar eclipse. Solar, this is a lunar eclipse. Lunar, because that's where I'm at with my life. Okay, so we have our sun, we have our moon, and we have our earth. So remember, the part that the moon is completely blocking out, okay, I'm going to shade this a little bit darker, that is our umbra. Okay, remember you want to be under the umbrella and protect from rain. Okay, these are the penumbra. Okay, they're much, much lighter. So I'm just going to do this. This is umbra. And then we have this. And this is the penumbra. I always like second guess myself on how to spell it. And then I go off the page, but that's the penumbra. Okay. There's two penumbra and one umbra. Always make sure you're labeling both. Okay. Now it's a lot easier because we have a lot more room to work with, with this. So we have our sun, we have our earth and we have our itty bitty moon. I'm just going to put an M above it. Okay. So for this one, the earth casts this big old shadow because we are much larger than the moon. Okay. This is our umbra. Umbra. Okay. And then we have much lighter shadows. And both of these again, because there are always two penumbras. If you are a Pokemon dork like me, and I mean dork in the loveliest of terms, Umbreon, okay, one of the evolutions, is completely dark. Dark type Pokemon, jet black sort of thing, okay? Umbra. Penumbra is if there was an actual evolution between Eevee and Umbra, or Umbreon, to where you can have Penumbreon. Again, my little fan fiction -y world. If I could, I would. Okay, so this is how I would want you to diagram it for both. Make sure you're labeling both 
Penumbra. Okay, so I have a feeling that originally when this was printed, Mr. G goofed up because he's the one who edited this, so just keep that in mind. I think it was just supposed to be the one table and you were supposed to give me these, but instead we're going to adjust a little bit. So we are working with compare and contrast. So we're comparing a total solar eclipse. Oh, that's why. Let's see if I can read today. Let's rewind. Tell Mr. G I'm sorry. Okay. But total solar eclipse versus a partial solar eclipse. So we give you the umbra, sun is 100% blocked out, and we have the moon doing all of this. The partial is the um, penumbra. Um, some of the sun can be viewed from Earth. Um, and then the similarities, moon is blocking the sun and it is sun, moon, Earth. So let's talk lunar eclipse. Okay, so lunar eclipse. A total lunar eclipse is going to be similar to a total solar eclipse. It's just the ordering of what is doing the blocking. So we are still within the umbra. Okay. And the sun is 100% blocked out, but not by the moon. So sun is 100% blocked by the earth. Okay, so we still have our umbra and we still have the sun being 100% blocked out, but in this case, it is by the earth. And in this case, it's by the moon. Okay. Partial lunar eclipse. Again, we are viewing the penumbra. And this is where some, not S-U-M, S-O-M-E, of the sun can be seen on Earth. Can be seen on, and instead of Earth, the moon. Okay. Similarities. So either way, it is the Earth blocking some of the sun. So Earth blocking the sun. And our order is sun, Earth, moon. Okay. So solar eclipses, lunar eclipses, very similar, but you need to just be able to compare and contrast what's happening within the total versus the partial. Okay. I know this is a long video, but I'm essentially giving you answers for your test. So you're welcome. Okay. So draw a diagram and add a sentence to describe the motion. So this is the biggest one. If there is anything we for sure take out of this, it should be this question because again, the amount of learners I've had to mark down just because we get revolution versus rotation completely goofy. We need to know this. Okay. So when we talk revolution, remember, I always think new year's resolution. Um, so this is where an object moves around another object. Okay, so I always draw this diagram. So I have the sun, I have my ellipse because it's not a perfect circle. And I have our Earth, okay? And this is where the Earth is going around the sun, okay? Rotation. This is when an object spins on itself. This is our top, okay? So an object spinning on self. So this is where I draw my slightly larger earth. I have our axis going through it. 
and this is spinning on itself. Okay, so this gives us this gives us a year. This gives us a day versus night. Okay, so that is the difference when we're thinking on the Earth scale. Okay, make sure you have this um, drawn out, written out, whatever is going to help you understand it more. Okay, so identify which season the Northern Hemisphere would be in due to the location of its revolution. We revolve counterclockwise. So remember, counterclockwise is to the left. So if I were to draw in, it's something of this sort. Okay, so I already gave you this because we were working on it earlier, but in case you skipped ahead to this part. So this is where our axis is always tilted slightly to the right. Um, of the planet. So our northern hemisphere versus our southern hemisphere. Okay, so we can get rid of these just so no one is confused. Okay, so that. So if this is summer where we are tilted more so toward the sun, we are getting the most direct radiation, which means that we are at the warmest portion of our year. The opposite of summer to me, going opposite makes more sense than trying to follow the path. The opposite of summer, so when we are pointed away from the sun, this is veranda Santa time for Australians. This is winter. Okay. Now, we're left with just spring and fall now. So it's just knowing what season comes between summer and winter versus winter and summer, okay? We are moving into this. In the next couple of days, we technically experience what is called the fall equinox, where we have 12 hours of daytime, 12 hours of nighttime, but we're gonna start shifting from more daylight hours to less daylight hours. So this is the fall, okay? Which means opposite of fall is spring. Okay, starting with summer in my brain always makes the most sense for me, okay? But that's just what I do. So drawing the axis, you should have drawn in these lines so that you know specifically what season you're in. Now remember, just because like fall, technically the northern like pole is closest to the sun, it's just more so to represent. So if we're like this in the summer, during the fall, because of where we're at in our rotation, looking at a two-dimensional flat object, it looks like this, but it is still tilted, okay? We're just tilted to where the sun is hitting that equator more so, okay? Um, so yeah, that's what's up, okay? Summer, fall, winter, spring. Final page, and you're like, thank God this is a 30 plus minute video. Okay, so complete the model of the moon phases by shading the part of the moon that is not reflected in the sun's light. So what I want this to basically say, because I think this is going to make more sense, is how do we see it on Earth? Right on Earth. Okay, so if we're standing on Earth and our moon is directly in front of the sun, okay, that means that whatever light there is, is on the backside and it's not reaching our viewing ability on Earth. So that means it is completely shadowed out. Okay, I'm going to switch to my pencil here because it's going to start getting a little wonky and I'm afraid of making a mistake. <laughs> so when our moon is right here, we are like completely blacked out. We are seeing a new moon. We don't see a moon exactly. Okay. Now, 
everything in our solar system revolves counterclockwise, which means we again are moving to the left. Okay, so we will continue if drawing in these arrows is what helps you go for it. Okay, we are moving in this direction. So that. Now the next thing is, remember our, um, our demo day, okay? When we talk about waxing on and waning off, or max, or wax to the max, we're talking about adding light, and light is coming from the right. Why? Because that's just what happens, okay? So, as we move from this, we start to see just a little bit more. So, when I shadow this in, my light is still on the right, okay? And I'm shadowing in the parts we don't see on Earth, okay? By the time we reach here, this is where we block out about half. Okay, but the light is still on the right. We're continuing to revolve a little bit more, showing a little bit more of the moon until we reach our full moon stage. Okay, this is our full moon. Remember, we're slightly above or slightly below eye level, the moon's tilt that is, to where it is being fully reflected. Okay. as we continue to move. Um, we are going to start, you have to almost think of it like you're turning your paper, not so much like this two-dimensional shape. We are going to start taking away light. We have moved from our waxing phase. So wax on is over here. So now we are waning on. where we're going to start taking some light away. And just as we were adding light in this direction, so it got more and more in this direction, we're going to start taking away from that direction. So we are going to take a little bit away. Okay, and now you're like, but gee, this doesn't make sense with the way that the sun is coming in. No, because remember, we have to think of it moving like this, rather like where the moon and we are moving, rather than the sun just sitting there, okay? So that, to where we are left with just a little bit, and then we move back into that new moon stage, okay? So how we see it from Earth is relatively like this, okay? Now, so we shade the parts not reflected, we have the shadow. Now number two is labeling the appropriate phase during the moon's revolution around the earth. So I like to start with my four main points. If we were to think of this like noon, this is a new moon at noon. Okay, then I'm gonna jump up here to say the like three o'clock or if you were thinking minute hands, 15, which means it is a quarter after. So this is our first quarter. Okay. Over here, we should know this one. We have our full moon. And then down here, we are at our third quarter or final, whichever one you want to call it. Okay, at least then you have half of the answers done. Okay, now it's just knowing the difference between waxing and waning and crescent and gibbous. Okay, so what is lit up is only a crescent shape and as we've already discussed, this is waxing on. So this is our waxing crescent. Okay. 
which means if this is the waxing crescent, this must be the waxing gibbous. Gibbous is like, it's getting a big. It's getting big. I don't know if that's just what comes into my mind. So, waxing gibbous. Okay. I know that there's a lot going on here, but you wouldn't necessarily have these titles. I was just... If this helps you, sweet. If not, ignore it. Okay, so we now have all of our waxing done. Now we need to just wane the rest of it off. So this is where you're just going to kind of mirror what's going on. So we still have a good portion of the moon illuminated. So this is our waning gibbous. And then we have just the little crescent left. So we are in our waning crescent. Okay. Hopefully this makes more sense now that we've kind of gone through it with one another. Okay. So final question. Why do we see different phases of the moon throughout the month? Okay. This, why does all of this happen? This is happening because of the moon revolving around the earth. Okay, so there's the first point. Moon revolving around the earth. Our second point, why is this happening? It's very similar to like, why do we have seasons? So it's, it's a two point thing. So yes, because the moon is revolving around the earth, but it also has everything to do with the shadow. So what can we or can we not see because of the shadow that the moon is essentially giving itself? moon's shadow viewing from earth okay we can see here as it revolves it casts a different shadow it either starts to take away the shadow or it's adding the shadow and that all has to do with where it is in relation to the sun but most importantly, where we are on the earth to be able to view it, okay? If you want to test yourself, okay, I want you to also answer this question. How do we know the difference Difference between a waxing crescent and a waning crescent. Tell me that. How do I know that this is a waxing crescent versus a waning crescent? If I were to just give you a picture, how would you know which one it truly is? Okay? Test yourself. I want to see what you know. And especially because we're at 45 minutes. You don't want to hear from me anymore. Um, if you have any questions, though, please come and ask your teacher. Um, I'm here to help to the best of my abilities, um, but also hopefully you feel a little bit more prepared for the assessment coming up. Um, and yeah, let me know if you need anything. Have an awesome day, eighth graders.